Well, tonight's new data offers crucial clues about how COVID-19 is spreading in our schools. It's all included district by district in a state database. And so far, it looks like the virus is spreading most among local middle and high school students. You know, and even then, the case counts are not high. 12 News reporter Victoria DeLeon is live with a better breakdown of the numbers here in Southeast Texas. Victoria. Yeah, Jordan and Dave, schools have to self-report positive COVID-19 cases within 24 hours. Then that data is assembled into the new statewide database. Last month, schools began to adapt to the changes the pandemic brought on. While some continued with virtual learning, other parents were comfortable sending their kids back. We spoke to parents like Sky Statch dropping off their kids on the first day of school. I think that they're doing a really good job of trying to keep all the kids safe. And Since then, the state has started tracking and sharing data showing how COVID-19 is spreading in schools. Between August 1st and September 20th, less than 1% of students and staff members across the state have tested positive. In Southeast Texas, data from July 27th to September 20th shows only 100 students out of more than 59,000 have had the virus. Uh, it shows that when we put these protocols in place, they, that they are working, right? Dr. Gary Many with the Medical Center of Southeast Texas says low numbers are not an excuse to lighten up on preventative measures. It's important to be vigilant because it's still here. It's not going away anytime soon and we're going to head into a flu season. Within Evadel ISD, there's only been one positive case reported. Superintendent Gary Fairchild says virtual learning hasn't been easy for his community. Even with our Wi-Fi deals that we put out, we still had some issues with that. And it was it was pretty much kind of a headache to try to get it all together. He says there aren't many students learning virtually. That's why they'll transition to completely in-person learning in October. There's no substitute for having those kids in front of you every day and teaching them. And I, I think parents have really started to realize that and that we have all the precautions in place to continue. Now, Evadel ISD is phasing in students and will move forward with their 100% in-person return on October 13th. In Beaumont, Victoria De Leon, 12 News. All right, Victoria, new info tonight on the urgent race for a COVID-19 vaccine. President Trump says the FDA is playing politics with potential new vaccine guidelines, but the FDA commissioner says politics do not play a factor in their decisions. Science does. A vaccine is a top priority for the president. He's threatened to step in to get a vaccine pushed through faster and says he could overrule the FDA scientists if they propose stricter guidelines for authorizing emergency coronavirus vaccinations. Well, right now, House Democrats have started drafting a coronavirus relief bill. They say it would include more direct payments to Americans. Yes, that does mean they're talking about a stimulus check. It could also deliver aid for restaurants and airlines. The bill could be in the range of more than $2 trillion. Recent talks between House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin have gone nowhere. But both sides say they don't want to give up on the idea of a new coronavirus relief bill. Let's track the virus by the numbers. Texas cases spiked again Thursday, close to 5,000 new cases, but that number includes more than 800 cases that were released as part of a backlog. The state also reporting 138 deaths. This, by the way, the fourth straight day that we've seen the number of fatalities increase. So heading to the big board, new cases in our area also doubled in the last 24 hours, up to 93, 39 of those in Jefferson County. One positive sign, no new local deaths. So here's the rolling average. Safe to say, as you see that line inching downward, that we are still in good shape with no new COVID spikes. Hospitalizations look a bit better as well. Patient counts in regular rooms and the ICU both fell from Wednesday to Thursday. And now COVID patients make up 9.3% of the patients in the hospital in our region. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look outside at our 12 News Sky Cam. You are getting a bird's eye view from the 12 News Studio. Um, and Storm Trucker Christiana Ramos is in for Pat Patrick tonight. You're keeping close tabs on what's expected for tomorrow and over the weekend. And I think it's some pretty good news. It is indeed. We're going to have a sunny and cooler temperatures, so that's always nice. Um, right now, tropical cyclone beta, this is post-tropical cyclone beta, um, really is 
to blame for these cooler temperatures because we have a cold air advection on north winds and lower level moisture coming off on the back side of beta and it's producing that cloudy fall like weather that we're going to be seeing um, in the next couple of days um, and we are expecting cooler temperatures uh, into the weekend so it's going to be sunny it's going to be clear no chances of rain Friday into Saturday, we're going to see those temperatures in those mid to high 60s. Um, and we're not going to get any hotter than 80 degrees outside. So right now, currently 70 in Port Arthur, 72 in Beaumont, 73 in Orange, 70 in Kirbyville and 71 in Jasper throughout the state. We are seeing in the 70s and the 60s, so cooler temperatures throughout the state, and we will be seeing these more of these temperatures um, heading on into next week. We may even have below normal temperatures. So we'll have more for you here in the 12 News Storm Tracker Center. Tonight, protesters still marching through the streets of Louisville well after curfew. They've been met by police in riot gear. The mayor there has extended the curfew through the weekend. Across the nation, protesters have also lined the streets again tonight. Their calls for justice for Brianna growing louder. They're still upset about the grand jury's decision. In Philadelphia, protesters marched through downtown, even shutting down a major highway at one point. And in Brooklyn, folks marched through parks and streets. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has a new plan for protesters here who decide to get out of hand. He wants mandatory jail time for folks involved in violent protest. This is a move that the governor says will protect those who peacefully protest. He laid out that strategy today, surrounded by state leaders and members of the Dallas Police Association. The governor basically wants mandatory jail time for people who riot, destroy property, assault a police officer, or use lasers to target an officer, or folks who block hospital entrances and exits. Governor Abbott saying it's pretty simple, be peaceful or go to jail. As Martin Luther King himself made abundantly clear, he wanted to make sure that protests were going to be done peacefully. What Governor Abbott's laying out today brings honor and dignity and respect to the cause. When someone peacefully and respectfully and passionately is protesting, they should not have that belief destroyed by people who have ill intent. The governor's proposal is just that. He still would need legislative approval. So whether you're voting early starting October 13th or you're waiting until the big day, November 3rd, we know a lot of you are still trying to decide when and how you're going to cast your ballot. And like everything else this year, there will be changes. 12 News reporter Amelia White breaks down the precautions in place for in-person voting. With only 40 days out from election day, safety is a top question on everyone's mind. So if you plan on hitting any of the polling areas across Southeast Texas, here are some things you need to know. Are masks required for voters and poll workers? Masks not required in a polling location for a voter. We cannot mandate that voter wear a mask. We ask that they do uh, for their safety as well as the safety of our election workers. Uh, I do uh, request and mandate that my poll workers wear masks. What about social distancing? Carolyn Gidry, the Jefferson County Clerk, says it will be strictly enforced. Yes, we marked them with the uh, tape. That's required. In fact, there will be six feet spacing markers at polling locations to make sure everyone is a safe distance apart. Can voters expect a separate entrance and exit at voting locations? Well, that depends upon the location and the, the makeup of the building. In most buildings, there's one entrance and exit. Will there be adequate spacing between voting booths? Absolutely. In fact, we've had to remove some of the booths in order to make sure that we have safe distancing. So instead of perhaps eight machines at a particular location, we probably downsize it to six. How often will voting booths, door handles, and surfaces be sanitized? The voting machines are wiped down after each voter and before it, another voter is placed into that booth. And of course, the door handles and everything should be wiped down uh, as people come and go. Gidry also tells me they recommend people to vote alone this year. That means leaving the kids at home if you can. In Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. And just a reminder, you are running out of time to register to vote. Only 11 days left. You can get a link to our election guide by texting the word vote to 409-838-1212.
In case you missed it, the U.S. Marshals have arrested a man who was wanted in connection to a murder that happened more than two years ago in Beaumont. Police have not said where they found 22-year-old Jacavian Mayberry. Marcus Mitchell was shot and killed at the Cypress Bend Apartments on North Major Drive in June of 2018. Police initially arrested Mayberry on other charges, but recently they obtained a murder warrant. We expect to learn more about this case tomorrow. Liberty County Sheriff's deputies are still searching for Jose Marin Sariano. Now they think he's crossed over the border into Mexico. Sariano is wanted in connection with the Saturday night murder of a woman found in a burning car and the sexual assault of another. The case has now been turned over to the U.S. Marshal's Office. They're working with Liberty County officials and Mexican authorities. The investigation is continuing on both sides of the border. This is new video released tonight from surveillance cameras in Port Arthur. Police hope it helps them find two men involved in a robbery at the Tractor Supply Store on Highway 365. One man stole a chainsaw last night. A clerk followed him into the parking lot, and police say that's when another man flashed a gun at the employee. The guys got away in a white Toyota Corolla. Sad new developments tonight out of Sour Lake. A four-year-old child has died following a tragic accident at the family's home over the weekend. Asher Dow was found in a pond on Highway 326 this past Sunday. The child was taken to the hospital, but he didn't survive. A memorial with friends and family will be held at 2 o'clock on Saturday at First Baptist Church in Sour Lake.